In this video, we will be going over the search functions of the Recurring Billing Module. Using this module, it is possible to search by customers, contracts, billing charges, and expiring contracts. Let's look at these four options individually. Searching by customer can be done by clicking on the View Customers option. A screen will appear allowing you to search by customer ID, company, first name, last name, or email address. The default view is to search only active customers, but you can change this to search by either active, inactive, or all customers. Entering nothing in any field and selecting all customers will show you a full list of all the customers that have been loaded into the recurring billing module. For this example, we will leave both fields blank and select all customers, and then click the Find Customers button. As you can see, the resulting display will show you the customer ID, the key, a unique identifier, the customer or company name, last name, first name, email, and status. You also have the ability to sort any field by using the up and down arrows found in the blue row at the top of this table. Additionally, you can click the check boxes on the left of this table and then use the Make Checked Customers drop-down to set selected customers active, inactive, or delete them from the system. Next, searching by contracts can be done by clicking on the View Contracts option. This screen will allow you to search by the contract ID, next bill date, total amount, pay method, and status. Next bill date and total amount have drop-downs that will allow you to select how the value in these fields is to be used. Total amount, for instance, can be used to find amounts that are greater than, less than, or equal to the amount entered in the next field. As with the View Customers option, leaving all the fields blank will show you all contracts currently set up on the system. For this example, we will leave all settings on their default values and click the Find Contracts button. The next screen will show you the contracts and the customer ID, payment type, next bill date, and amount. You can use the arrows in the blue bar on the top of this table to sort respective to that field. There is also additional functionality on this table. Clicking on a contract ID will open that contract directly. The same goes with clicking on the customer ID field. You can click payment history to see the transactions done for the particular contract or you can delete the contract. Next, let's discuss the billing report. Seeing a billing report can be done by clicking on the billing report option. This report will allow you to search through transactions based on transaction status, the customer ID, the billed amount, a specific date range, and by the payment method. The drop-down next to transaction status will allow you to select all transactions, only transactions that were approved, or transactions that had an other value, such as declined. The drop-down next to Build Amount is much the same as in the View Contracts option, and the Date Range drop-down will allow you to select predefined date ranges for your search. In this example, you will select a transaction status of All, a date range of Year to Day, modify that date range, and then click the Find Billings button. The following screen will show you the ref number of the transaction, the contract ID, the transaction date, the customer, the payment type, and the amount. Clicking the ref number will show you the full details of the transaction, while clicking on the contract ID will show you all the information for that contract. As with the other options, you can also sort each column by using the arrows in the blue bar at the top of this table. Finally, the expiration report can be done by clicking on the expiration report option. This report will allow you to search by customer ID and will show you the credit cards with a specific expiration. A drop-down is available to pre-select either the current month or the next month. You also have the option of searching through contracts by their status such as all, active, inactive, or pending. 
For this example, we will manually put in an expiration date and then click expired items. As you can see, any contract that has a credit card with an expiration date of the one that was entered will populate. From here, you can see the customer ID, the contract ID, the customer, the account number, and the expiration date. Clicking on the customer ID field will bring you to that customer where you can modify or update the credit card information. Using the reports and view tools under recurring billing will allow for greater oversight over the entire process and should be used to ensure an accurate, timely, and successful recurring billing experience. This concludes the tutorial video.